kala ratri is giving us all that insight and energy to go beyond the aspect of fear in indian mythology bull represents righteousness so we have to reach the higher levels of reality by being in the path of truth there is some limitation that we have experienced in the past because of which we attracted that heaviness or limitation or negativity or fear why did god do this to me why is god against me god is always bringing these challenges to me is it true is it real namaste viewers the ninth sacred manifestations of devi during navaratri is indeed a great opportunity for her devotees to celebrate her in different forms but by developing deeper insights about what those nine beautiful avatars really mean can make a lot more sense to our lives so today in this special episode of navaratri let us try to understand the subtle realities of all the nine various magnificent avatars of devi and try to also understand how we can embody them in real sense The first avatar of Durga on Navratri is called as Shailaputri. She was called Shailaputri as she was a daughter of Himavat Maharaj, the king of the Himalayan mountains. Now, when we look at it at a subtle sense, we should all understand that we have to go beyond understanding the gross reality of existence. When you look at a mountain, a Shaila, we know that when we just have a look at a mountain it looks like a huge chunk of rock but when you get into the subtle realities of what exactly is the energy that it is emitting we try to connect with the deeper realities of how humongous its stamina is the energy that it's emitting the light it radiates and the urge for it to reach the higher levels likewise when we become a little sensitive and subtle towards the existence of the gross body the gross reality that we all know we try to connect ourselves with the subtle realities of our existence the sense of light that we all can emit through that conscious awareful living and the constant courageous enthusiastic aspiration to reach the higher levels of reality can also be embodied by praying to goddess shailaputri here we can also notice that the goddess shailaputri is sitting on a bull and in indian mythology bull represents righteousness so we have to reach the higher levels of reality by being in the path of truth and with this conscious awareful perfect path that we choose there is this humongous confidence and courage that comes up within ourselves which helps us to reach the ultimate destination and what is the ultimate destination here to slay the demon which is or who is within our own selves the mahisasura the demon who resides as the negative aspect of our own self on day 2 we worship the devi in form of brahmacharini we all know that she did deep uh, tapas penance for being eligible to marry lord shiva so the element of fire that is emitted during this whole journey is in fact giving us valuable lessons as well we all know that when we connect with the true essence there is humongous experience of purity that we all explore the innocence that we experience now when we get into the reality the truth the inner essence the realization that comes in the purity that we unfold within ourselves gives a whole new dimension of understanding about all the experiences of past or all that we want to pursue in future isn't it for instance if you get into the understanding of what is real and what is unreal the whole understanding of the experiences of what we have perceived earlier changes altogether likewise this path of innocence this purity that we embody through worshiping her is what we can offer back to her so the energy of brahma charini with all the other beautiful stories that we have heard about navaratri should also be felt in form of the purity the innocence that we all can experience by worshiping her on day 3 devi is worshiped as chandraganta so chandra as we all know is moon so 
Devi Chandraganta is wearing a crescent moon like a necklace or an ornament they say. Here, Ganta means the bell and as we know, bell produces the nada, the cosmic sound which pervades the whole universe. It is also an indication of being alert, being aware, being conscious. So, when with that awareness we try to understand or decipher what real beauty is all about, we go beyond analyzing beauty with that logical ignorant judgment. I am beautiful, I am not beautiful, this is good, that is not good. So, we walk through this path to reach the ultimate reality through the inner mind to understand what real beauty is all about. So, Jantraganta is that energy which helps us with awareness to understand these layers of inner reality and the inner beauty that we can experience through this. So, on the third day with the experience of bringing in that awareness, that alertness through that nada with the help of Chandra Ganta, we worship Devi as Kushmanda on the fourth day. The divine cosmic energy, the Chetana, the life force which pervades throughout the universe is the energy that we should be sensitive or conscious about during the worship of Kushmanda Devi. So, when we become conscious of that prana, the Chetana that is all around us, that we are made up of, we start healing and purifying our body and our mind. In fact, we go beyond the mind to understand this layer of energy. So, when the purity is completely expanding itself and bringing in that harmony into the mind and the body, we know that we have that complete conscious blissful experience in the heart and realize that we are that energy that we are seeking. With this experience on the fifth day when we worship the beautiful Skandamata, there is a beautiful combination of two significant energies. One is the embodiment of the compassion, the love, the divinity, the unconditional mercy that the Devi is emitting. The other one is Skanda, the warrior who is sitting on her lap, who is always fighting for the truth. So, she holds that pride, that humongous uh, sense of confidence that I always have an energy which can fight against the evil, the ignorant, the fear and she is still very much grounded because she is emitting that beautiful smile and showing that compassion. This is exactly the quality that we all should experience during these 9 days where we are developing humongous confidence, strength, courage, fearlessness and that feeling of being protected by her grace, mercy, love and compassion, yet be very grounded and humble and emit that beautiful divine energy to the outside world. On the sixth day, we worship Devi as Katyaini. She is all set to go and slay the demon. Here, when we worship her, there are some beautiful insights that we can gain. We all are desperate to achieve one or the other goal. We all want a quick desire manifestation. But Ma Katyaini is telling us to be absolutely calm, to develop the discipline within, but to be very, very peaceful through this journey. So, we understand that if we are too furious, we are too anxious or we are too restless and disturbed to achieve a specific goal or a destination, even after achieving it, the mind will still continue to be in the same state of disturbance, isn't it? So, by embodying the energies of Ma Katyaini, we can understand that everything, all the challenge, all the limitations, all the critical circumstances is nothing but the expression of situations for moving towards betterment which is probably sort of laid by her own grace where she is just putting it across to us in such a way that as we work through this hurdle, as we work through chasing these dreams, we are becoming certain powerful qualities. We are experiencing it and becoming one with that strength. And yes, on the beautiful seventh day, we worship her in form of Kalaratri. Though this comes up as a very uh, fearful energy, Kalaratri is giving us all that insight and energy to go beyond the aspect of fear. Most of us feel that Kali is somebody who should be worshipped to help us to get rid of negativity and fear. Yes, it is true, but 
there is another beautiful important thing that we all have to understand here why is that we attracted the fear in the first place why of all the beautiful things in the creation we attracted negativity that is the million dollar question here isn't it so there is some ignorance there is some illusion within our own selves there is some limitation that we have experienced in the past because of which we attracted that heaviness or limitation or negativity or fear so in the process of worshiping her as we understand the deeper realities she is helping us to completely pull out that ignorance that duality and that confusion and to come back to that harmony and light on the eighth day we worship her in form of gauri gauri the first part of the name gauri which starts with the letter g is mentioned in vedas as ray of light ray of knowledge so in this path of knowledge as we try to seek the divine mother she comes across as the all pervading benevolent force now why is it important to understand this this sounds as very simple concept yet it is complicated because most often whenever we fa- face hurdles whenever we go through some uh, tedious situations immediately we utter a sentence why did god do this to me why is god against me god is always bringing these challenges to me is it true is it real can we validate this when the whole universe is helping us to become the best version of ourselves is it possible that god is deliberately putting forth some negativity and some uh, creating some trouble and uh, ruckus to our daily life it is not but most of us believe it to be so so to come to that sense of reality to be in that light of knowledge to understand that she is constantly helping us to release ourselves from negative karmic baggages she is always there to help us she is backing us up with innumerable opportunities and giving us guidance to come back to our real essence and real self and to go towards progress to achieve that progress is what she is constantly aspiring for is one of the best things that we can experience as we worship ma gauri on the eighth day and finally on the ninth day when we worship siddhi datri it is the energy of perfection yes who doesn't want to achieve that contentment but there are two different aspects of experiencing this one is being extremely egoistic that i am perfect already in this and i have nothing more to learn and i did all this the i ego starts coming up but then with the worship of siddhi datri we understand that it is not really me or i who has done it it has happened through me it is that divine conscious which is working through me and has manifested or unfolded itself to create all that we have so the potential that is unfolded is definitely not something that i did but something that express itself through me when we spiritually put ourselves into this alignment our ego is destroyed completely and if we are in the zone of i did nothing i can do nothing i'm worthless i don't think i can do this even at that space she is there to back us up and say you are capable you can do it you are the chosen one and you are the special one so being in complete balance in that middle path is what we can achieve by worshiping ma siddhi datri and feel that victory on vijayadashmi of winning over the demon within our own selves understanding the negativity empowering ourselves with all the divine positive attributes that is required for us to win over this is the real essence according to me of navaratri of all the other celebrations that we do on this 9 days if we don't understand what can we experience and what should we embody i don't think it can be of great help to us rather than just creating some pompous about the whole thing that we did during these 9 days but if we get into the subtle reality of what this is actually trying to teach us it can indeed be one of the greatest celebrations of the whole year what do you think if you like this information kindly share this with your loved ones too so that they can also enjoy their navratri with deeper understanding next time i'll meet you again with another useful insight on drugless therapy until then take care of yourselves happy navratri jai durga